God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Glory be to my Lord God Almighty, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth. To those our Lord has given a free invitation of a gracious effect, in order to come and enjoy in the winepress of the Father, wherewith He alone went to the cross, purchased our salvation. But now He calls us to be in His compartments or in His companions to believe upon that salvation and to enjoy. He alone endured the cross and provided us the salvation, but now He calls each and every individual one who has been born in this earth to come and share this gracious invitation graciously bestowed upon this sinful mankind. What a great gracious invitation that this earth can enjoy or think of. Then to have that great righteousness of our Lord being imputed to those who believe by faith alone in Christ alone, who can never know, who can never learn, who can never even think. What is that imputation given for them at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone? And in return, God loving the world so much, being sending His only begotten Son, that is uniquely born, Monegine, that there is none like Him. There is none who can ever think that it could be possible for the things pertaining for salvation. Because every one sin death comes short of the glory of the essence box of God. And Lord God Almighty has given us, in order to enjoy this great essence box of God to be fulfilled by a simple act of faith, making His Son to be wine pressed and given for us this great salvation for our life on this earth to be fulfilled, to have greater joy on this earth, to have greater security, to have greater salvation. And not only there, our Lord stops in the first grace, He goes on to the second grace which is a good will for each and every believer who comes to learn the word of the Lord. There is no other virtue for a believer to do than to learn Bible doctrine. At what cost is spending his life on this earth without learning Bible doctrine certainly makes him to drive crazy in frantic search of happiness in the gypsy movements, in the emotionalisms, in the teaching of good deeds and performing of fruits, thinking that without faith it is not without fruits it is not possible to please that great Lord because they were they ask with faith works are needed wrongly interpreting the meaning of faith and works. A good of intrinsic value without having been matured in the word of the Lord is no way possible for a believer to grow up and to really manifest that good deeds before the foundation of the world which our Lord has kept for us to walk in them, to peripatao in them and to perform them. They do not even know what is a good deed in comparison to children to their parents or parents towards their children because we were continuing this discourse of yesterday's. At the age of two, the parents should train the kid to go to Sunday school. And from there on, if the Sunday school ministers are not enough for him to teach, then the father should take the disciplining res responsibility to nurture them, to admonish them with greater care and with greater concern and train them up in the word of the Lord so that they could be the responsible citizens of heavenly realm in this world of a pilgrimage trip. Not only being a responsible citizens of heavenly citizenship, but also to the country where which they belong. The first good deed that a parent or the believer should do is to train their own children. And we have a great lesson to find in First Thessalonians chapter 5, First Timothy chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Giving a discourse about widows, our Lord says, give these instructions so that they could be irreprehensible at the before judgment seat of Christ. 
And when they are being given this enjoining instructions in the law, do you know what they do? They certainly first correct their own household things. The things pertaining to the believer's family in a group. But individually, each and every believer's life in respect, to, in respect to wife and husband relationship. That's what several times in the mystery doctrine, Apostle Paul has been instructed to write. The basic instructions, particularly, first thing, the first, the divine institution, marriage. And does he stop there? He goes on to give the children the second divine institution. And third one, what? As you grow up, you become masters or slaves. These three admonitions are clearly mentioned for us in the reality of Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians, three times repeating and telling how we need to obey, how we need to perform, how we need to do, how we need to think. And while Lord God, the Holy Spirit has written them for our admonition, so that the primary responsibility for a father to being in the church or the pastor teacher to be termed out, who will be above him to train this pateras and materas, that is what fathers and mothers, from the true, inerrant and infallible word of the Lord, with proper exegesis and isagogics and categorization, so that they could know what is the first fruit mentioned in Revelation chapter 2. Because Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 3 teaches to us, Israel was holiness unto Jehovah, which was the first fruits of his increase. Today the church age should be holiness unto Jehovah. And we have to be the first fruit of Alekene Ketesus to the Lord. A first fruit in the sense of privacy of priesthood, the privacy of kingship, the privacy of royal ambassadorship work which have to be delineated, the privacy of becoming the royal high priest for our Lord, in not, not royal high priest, but royal priest to our Lord. Our royal high priest is only our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who will be executing the same work of kingship and priesthood in the future millennium as mentioned in Zechariah chapter 6 verses 9 to 13. So we need to now show forth the prototype, the prototype divine dinosphere which he survived and given for us the same thing which we are continuing as models now we will be the prototypes for our lord in exercising the royal kingship and royal priesthood the two officers in one person and certainly our lord will be the model in the future millennium and the pastor she teachers should train them up should train whom the congregation which come and that congregation certainly includes virgins celibates widows and married these are the only two things bible recognizes and there are certain cases in where the two have become one they should not be divided asunder and divorce one when it comes when it is a point of adulteration or xyz methods that we shall look on later on but when you consider even that there are four cases one should be virgin either he should be a married one or she should be a widow or he should be a widow or diverse the four departments but a glorious relationship has been given for us as apostle paul teaches in first corinthians chapter 7 that you are being bought with a great value of price do not be slaves for men and this price wherewith he has chosen us and he has bought us is to glorify him to the maximum and he tells instructions to the virgins or who have been celibates by birth or who are, will be made celibates for the ministry in the future real. Let them be pure in their flesh, in their soul and in their spirit. The same thing even approaches even to the reality of married people as well. Before they could come together, the marriage bed should not be defiled. And it comes to the reality of widows as well. If they are 60 years of age, then consider them to be widows. If below that, let them be having once again married rather than one attorney the name of the Lord. And in case if it is a matter of divorce, if anyone gives divorce, it is purely because he is causing her or himself to become adulterators. There is nothing on this earth which could be certainly, really not solved without the knowledge of Bible doctrine in the case of marriage life. 
Diverse is what you cause them to communicate for becoming adulterators. If you can find her in adultery, then you can give divorce. And if you have a hard heart to certainly give her divorce, then you are getting along to think and to make her and make yourself indulged with adultery. The primary concern today, what we are going to learn is about the marriage divine institution, number one. Because every believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been told to certainly show forth MGG by their good works. The first good work for an individual believer, either male or female, it will be for them to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That is what the highest virtue is all about. Not many faith healers will come and talk to you. If you don't do works, then your faith is vain. The same reformation movement which certainly fought by them to tell, you cannot have your salvation by your works. But Roman Catholicism came to tell, you shall have your salvation by works. The difference a lot. Even here in the Christian experience of the mechanics way of life which we have to live after salvation, Faith, it has to show forth its work in the terms now. It is not believing faith, but it is doctrinal faith which you should learn the highest virtue given to a Christian believer to certainly rise up to MGG. And until and unless he certainly grows up, in the, grows up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine as per 2 Peter 3.18, till then he cannot show forth any works. King Alfred was right. When we can find in AD 850 who came along to tell, do not employ any, any young man into your, into your occupational work until unless he first graduates in the word of the Lord. The right concept of thinking, the right concept of teaching, the right concept of living a true spiritual life to that greater glory in Jehovah. But today there is no emphasis for doctrine in our pulpits. And the way how they are being really not able to look for the rebound straight. They will never look upon the doctrine. When our Lord was reprimanded by those men to say that he has a devil, he is a man of a mad realm. Certainly some of the other congregation who were faithful to the Lord's word said, If he were a devil, do you think he was going to open that physically blind man's eyes and heal him? What a privilege it is to know these verses recorded and kept for us, preserved and still it will preserve, though the heaven and earth will pass away, if not the rapture or millennium, whichever way they can go, because it is the mind of Christ, the word of God, the voice of the Spirit. None can change the standards. Today being the first week of Sunday in this new year, but it should be second week of Sunday. Again, many congregational believers will come who are weekly once believers. They can never follow the course what we are teaching to them until unless they can go back and get the tapes what they can learn. But it is the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to train us every day to give that new freshness of experience in the mental ministry of Him who has reserved and kept for us this infallible and inerrant word so that our life is not enough certainly to draw it out. Every day, every word has so meaning and so experience to teach in the much variegated wisdom of God, the much variegated color of Bible doctrine. Certainly it is more glorious than any natural thing on this earth could look for you and please your eyes to be very much glorious and get emotion to appreciate it. But more than that emotion, more than that glorious, we find in each and every word of combination what we can be under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and certainly teach and train them up. The glorious glory of the word of the Lord, the mind of Christ. No nature, beauty can occupy it. No doubt how beautiful it may be, it may please your appetites or your kidneys to say, wow, how beautiful it is. But more than that, we find every day in the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, His beauty, His knowledge, His wisdom, His plan, His purpose, His eternal meaningful service which has been reserved and kept for us in eternity past to live such kind of a life only when we can use rebound and get back into the fellowship and tell to privately to God the Father how happily we were on this earth in the 
pilgrimage trip, irrespective of the sufferings that has planned and designed for us. Your grace was above all that your grace labored more than us. In vain we never labored, but in grace your grace abounded more for us. And how thankful we need to be to the Lord. Lord, we are just an unprofitable slaves. That which is our work to be done, we have done. We will never taste that Lord which has been told for us. Taste and see, touch and see how great He is. And find out and see through His mind how great they are. Those who really cherish and nourish in the word of the Lord. We will never follow that great value in the doctrine, dear brother, and how true it is for us to understand this great principal reality of the word. Many people don't even understand what is the simple logic that we are being kept alive on this earth even after salvation. They think Lord has given for us to multiply on this earth, to be happy, to do this. Certainly you have to multiply on this earth. And that doesn't necessarily mean your physical realm. It means your spiritual children as well. You have to rise. Those spiritual children who are faithful for the word of the Lord. Those spiritual children who can carry this torch in the midst of this evil apostasy that is happening in our church age. But what are we finding in our pulpits today? We find today clusters, leptes, lestes. The thieves, the robbers, the misthotes crowd. And the greater one which they are able to find today, the tongues crowd, emotionalized crowd. And when we find charismatic gospel crowd, prosperity gospel crowds, they do not even know the great principle told in Second John 2. When your soul prospers in the word of the Lord, so shall your prosperity be counted. How can the soul be prospered if you are having all sin nature, still occupying it and still ruling in it? But the word of the Lord teaches to us we have been buried with Christ. Colossians 2.12 when you are buried with Christ, what does it come out? The newness of life, which is after the righteousness of God, which is according to his imputed one, so that now the rivers of living water should flow from our stream of bellies. That is what wherever you go, whatever you do, it has to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and you have to make it out to walk in the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and be faithfully available for Him by being aware so that once again you do not take into captivity of slave by specious discords which the people will certainly pull you and take into captivity for their vain and empty glory on this earth. But you as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have never been called for vain glory on this earth. If you are searching for vain glory without the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is like the blind leading other the blind. Every pastor teacher who stands in the pulpit without having the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher from the head of the department of the church who has not been burdened to teach them so that he could open their spiritual eyes which has already been opened but enlighten them and make them to grow up in the proper wisdom so that he could make them to stand perfect in every planning of God till the time his life being immortal until the work of the Lord could be achieved on this earth then there are no real pastors for you in your pulpit. The figure of the pastor teacher looks and considers and thinks to give number one priority for fakery, for lies, for gimmicks, for tricks. Rather than teaching and explaining the word of the Lord, he claims for you excuses, time. The things which should have been done last year till now, they will never do it. This great sin in their mind about procrastination, hypochondria of imaginary illness and giving to them. Lord will certainly heal you if you come to my ministry and if you can apply my oil to you. All these mental attitude sins, the purity of their heart should tell in the consciousness of their minds whether they are really 
being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit with the true bona fide gift, and are they really standing with the robe of righteousness in the presence of God to teach every believer to make perfect and complete into the reaching of Telilia state? Or are they standing before the presence of the people in the congregation with their centered courts or with their appearances which they could please them? I don't deny it should not be so. In the sight of the men, they will be standing in that manner, but in the sight of God, they are standing in the realm of excreta, because they are out of fellowship. When it is a matter for a pastor teacher who is out of fellowship that he stands like an excreta, then how much more it would be if you are a pastor teacher and if you do not have this bona fide gift and you think you are having this bona fide gift and you are standing in the pulpits to teach them some legalism or asceticism or mysticism or Christian moral degeneracy, Christian immoral degeneracy according to the rudiments of this world involving science and technology, then how much more worse you are than those, than those excreta clothed pastor teacher who is out of fellowship. You are a dead corpus in the sight of God, decayed. But then to what you do? You say you have the priesthood and every, every believer become a priest or pastor. No, priesthood is another duty. Pastor teacher is another duty. Priesthood is for your confession of your sins to get back into fellowship by using rebound 1 John 1 9. And there it doesn't stop. The priesthood had even one more thing, first priority to teach. So how you can teach until unless you have been learned. How the parents can teach to their children until unless they have been taught by the right pastor teacher in the pulpits so that the way the manner they have to nourish, admonish, discipline and train them up by not giving, by not being very harsh upon them. The overall development in the psychological process which have been given for us in this unique dispensation of the church age talks much about thinking, thinking, thinking. If there is no thinking, then certainly there is nothing on this earth. Christianity is nothing but thinking, renovating your thoughts, replacing and substituting all the things of human viewpoint with divine viewpoint. But Satan comes to neutralize already the learned doctrine what you have in your soul and it comes to teach and have your demonic influence of false doctrines wherewith today the earth is really submerged into this doctrinal demands of demonic teachings. The pastor teacher who is standing, he doesn't assume whether he has the bona fide gift, he doesn't even care of it to think. He thinks in a lifetime of history, for example, if you can ask, if you do not know to drive a four-wheeler car, and if you practice it for five years, you will certainly become an expert driver, isn't it? Likewise, when you don't have a bona fide gift and stand in the pulpit, and certainly teach the word of the Lord, after 10 years of experience, 20 years of experience, you will become to think as if you are an expert in the Bible doctrine which is not in the in the sight of the Lord. Memorizing in your intellectual thoughts and teaching is not. Having to look upon the experiential knowledge, the word which has been taught for us, that certainly changes your pattern of behavior and causes you to show forth the fruits, the fruits, the good deeds. Not like the previous Pentecostal pastor, what we have studied in the previous week. The one who eloped with his own surname daughter and he wants to again come back to the church with his own surname daughter and the congregation wants to receive and telling that who is right, no one are right, then the pastor teacher can never stand in those things. If Timothy would have done the same things, Apostle Paul wouldn't have written those things for him to do and to do practice these things. He said, what you have learned, what you have been taught according to our pattern, follow there. And that meant to say in the pattern of the true righteousness and the holiness of Jehovah, they have to stand before him. And once you have been put that garment, there is no way you can sin again. Therefore, it is been told in 1 Timothy 5.1, if there are any elderly men, give them right reverence, right honor, right position. If there are any widows, give them right training so that they can go for supplications in the sight of God. The prayer supplications should be done by those widows day and night who are truly wife of one man or one husband. And does it stop there? The instructions given to Timothy, if there are any younger women, treat them with all purity of your heart as sisters. 
this standard instructions have been given for a bona fide gifted pastor teacher so that you could become a role model of experiential knowledge in those things and certainly show forth the reality of the greater glory of Jehovah in his life. And if they have been given for the pastor teacher those things, the congregation which follow him should certainly walk in the footsteps of Bible doctrine as he teaches and as he trains them up. Because if one has been sinned in the, in the congregation of the Lord, Lord counts that, that the entire congregation has sinned. And it is accountable on part of the pastor teacher to certainly take care and to look and to make them to be every way without blame, without spot, without blemish. To be given as a living sacrifice unto God every breath they take as long as they pilgrimate on this earth. And do you think it's a tough burden for you to be doing it? Because you may say, the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know these things? But Lord searches our range. When you are loyal to the Lord with such kind of a high standards of integrity, certainly Lord will send such kind of a man to your congregation because nothing is impossible with God. Certainly Lord was told to Elijah to tell to the point, do not think you are alone. I have been 7,000 men, a remnant of Israel, kept for me safe. That meant to say, certainly the right pastor teacher will find the right congregation. And that pastor teacher did not worry whether he is worrying, whether he is burdening that labor of his own. That work will be done by the operation power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in his. Certainly to gain that which is of a great value. It is not that I who labor, saith Apostle Paul, but the grace of God in me. And in Colossians 1.29 he teaches for us to learn. It is the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, working in us to do that greater glory in Jehovah. What a privilege it is for a man to be born in this unique dispensation of the church age, to be termed out as dispensation of the holiness of Jehovah, to be termed out dispensation of righteousness in Jehovah, to be termed out the dispensation of grace, church age, or above all, many people don't even understand it is the dispensation of reconciliation laid down upon our hands. And in order to make the reconciliation, the first thing what you have to do, first you need to train up your family. That's what the Bible teaches for us in 1 Timothy 5, 8. First you give number one priority for your family matters, for your family concerns, for your family people. And that family resembles the believing one. And if you are not able to do that great duty which has been laid down upon your shoulders towards your family members, then certainly it teaches for us you are most infidel than unbelievers because the Christian who falls below the best heathen standard of family affection is to be more blameworthy since he has what the heathen has not, the supreme example of love in Christ Jesus. The heathen doesn't have his, the love of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, though it has been graciously invited to have by faith alone in Christ alone. And if he is maintaining his standards of integrity towards his family, to be morally good, to be morally superior, and if you are a believer not able to look upon the needs of which have been much needed for you to train up your children in the basic doctrines, basic doctrines the holiness unto our Lord which is so much essential the first fruits of our Lord which is so much essential starts from your family dear brethren and who is the head of the family do you think the woman though she is having 49% of her role to be done the remaining 51% should be done by the one who is the head of the family who is nothing but the man and Bible teaches to us our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ thinking the head was who the mind the word of God Jehovah for a believer for male one who has to be it has to be Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the mind of Christ and for a woman the one who has been her husband a wife for her who is the head it is her man it is her man's thinking that's where you get the word man's thinking The order of hierarchy, the woman doesn't have her own mind to think in simple terms. So she cannot have authority to stand in the pulpit, though the Bible denies not to have. So you may say, why can't a woman have a bona fide gifted pastor teacher? But Lord has said, no, it is no. 
There is no way you can have your argument or your counsel to tell to Lord to suggest your opinions and say, Lord, she is having an eloquent of speech. Why can't she become the bona fide gifted pastor teacher? No way. The hierarchy order doesn't go for women for pastor teaching. She can teach in her own sphere of activities, which include Sunday school, some youth, and our older women teaching the younger women, those roles can be done, but not to have authority over the men in the congregation of the Lord. If it is a congregation of the Lord, if it is a congregation of true believers uniting there, if it is a congregation where the believers come together to really have a true fellowship in the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit through His Word, growing, nourishing, cherishing, and certainly being under the right principle of a pastor teacher so that they could know their life in Christ and truly enjoy the calling of Christ and what does it happen today half knowledge people are more in the pulpit though they have the bona fide gift who do not give their constant two or three decades of time not two or three years two or three decades of time who have to give at the moment of salvation when they have been born in the Christian family certainly Lord knows how to give and where to give and whom to give this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher and if he has given them in their Christian family he certainly trains that kid at the age of 11 or 12 or earlier to that whichever manner he has the reasoning and to take it out and from there on he trains for nearly one and a half decade or two decades our Lord's ministry for three years was a preparation behind three decades. The same principle which you and I should learn. There is no exception for you. The holiness unto the Lord demanded, number one, in the Old Testament times, to get separated from the flesh, from this world. And that is what the circumcision was taught for them, get separated, get a new covenant. Even the Christians should learn, though circumcision being a painful way, they performed. And even we find in Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 through 15, the tenth month, the tenth day of the first month, when Israel crossed Jordan, and they encamped at Gilgal, just east of Jericho. Here they circumcised all their males who had been born while they were traveled, while they were traveled through the wilderness. The first circumcision, first separation, first sanctification. The Christian believer who has been born in the right family of the word of the Lord certainly has to learn that he has to get circumcised, not made with the hands, but with the spirit of the Lord. He has to be made pure. He has to be made separated from the flesh. The soul and the spirit has to be kept blameless. How and when a kid can know these things until and unless their parents train them up. And do you know what a privilege it is to be born in a Christian family who follow the biblical principles? It is of a great value, dear brethren. And then and then, if you go on learning the word for two decades or three decades and you may say, I will become a pastor or teacher. No. That will be the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the Lord who rises you up to the vocation and he certainly trains you up to stand there as a voice of him. And when you preach, certainly people will change. By that you can understand what is the true bona fide gifted pastor teachers. But certainly many times we find in the epistles of Apostle Paul telling to us they never changed. So what? But his word is alive and it is the same. But the so-called pastors who are joining the congregations, who are joining the theological seminaries, haven't even spent that much of learning to be acquired in their soul of spiritual wealth in their hearts. But then too they come and stand in the pulpits and they say, I have two churches, I have four churches, not even read at least once the Bible. Doesn't it look strange? It is certainly a shame to tell the works that these people do in the midst of their evil mind just for the sake of their belly, really blaspheming the name and the character of my Christ and the tongues crowd which come to act as if they have not spoken in tongues 
and certainly how much they are blaspheming the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and grieving and squelching, and they say they are right. Why do they not change? Because they have stuck up for their stomach. The belly is their God. Once again, they crucify my Lord God Almighty because of their own selfish attitudes. Just for their survival, just for their food, just for their belly, they are doing this thing. A truly qualified pastor teacher should be from the head of the department of the church and Lord God the Holy Spirit trains him up only when he finds fit that he has been separated like this circumcision process. Separated to the greater glory of Jehovah. Separated from this world. And a temporary sacrifice to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Lord is faithful in providing such bona fide gifted pastor teachers in every era, in every geographical location. Though they may not have the same process of experience in learning the word, it is his will to train him up. It is his thoughts to provide him those things which is much needed, like the Philippi who was there. He was ready for everything, ready for service, readily available to do Lord's work, readily prepared. In the midst of a great joy where he was been called, he was been driven to the desert because he wanted to even be a witness for an Ethiopian. Dear brethren, this is how Lord God the Holy Spirit will use. Getting into your minds those things which you have learned, not in a sequence of subconscious psychological process, where the people may think even certainly having magnetization of the thoughts. No. Magnetization of the thoughts, one with accord with another, that may be according to the thinking of this world where the people think it could be great. But a true bona fide gifted pastor teacher who learns the word, it is the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to train you up. And it gets to your mind to the particular subject of sequence which has been required for your edification. It is like a man getting out of his treasure from the old and new, the great wealth of Bible doctrine. And that is how Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will certainly lead us. So we need to know, without circumcision, without getting separated, the kid cannot grow up to understand from the age of 2 till to the age of 14 right from a right pastor teacher or being under the Sunday school teacher how he has to be trained and from the age of 14 till to the age of 25 he has to start writing the Bible at least once preferably upon his knees so that he could overcome the wicked one but in today's pulpits what are we finding? The pastor teacher himself has not written at least once the Bible. How can he teach you those things? Therefore, it is not just standing here and teaching or kneeling here and teaching. It is what you have learnt already. That is what you have to apply it in process. And you have to preach what you are already doing. Since many of the pastors might have not been aware to write the Bible once, far less they could have written the Bible, but we find in the present today's evil Christendom, the men who have not even at least studied the Bible once, far less they can train up the church and think the church is such and such. They are not even worried what is the church in the sight of God. The church is the future bride of our Lord. Our Lord is going to get married to that mature church and the universal realm. Just do not enter into the church to make business for your bellies. We are not called to make business, dear brethren. But rather in return we are being called to serve Him. To make His word to be glorified above His name. Because He Himself has honored His word above His name, then who are we to withhold it back? Why are these problems today for us in our churches? Because the men have really forgot the basic doctrines of dispensations. Today, the Christian privileges have, of having impact as an invisible hero are being absolutely infringed. 
Many ministers neglect the responsibility to teach their listeners Bible doctrine. What to teach? Bible doctrine. How to teach? Until and unless they have the true bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church. Today you can easily assess whether these people are really having the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher or not. If they certainly have the true bona fide gift of pastor teacher, the number one work what they do is to teach, to teach and to teach. And they don't have any other process, they don't have any other method, they don't have any other techniques. What they do? Teach. That's why it has been termed out and tagged as a teaching shepherd. And if the pastor teacher doesn't teach, then he's not doing his work. And he's not certainly doing his work to be eligible for it until and unless he studies, 2 Timothy 2.15. Approved unto God the only degree which he has to have. Not like the man whom we have noted in the National Geographic channel over 140 degrees. And he says, you come after 10 years or 10 years, you will find my degrees crossing for 200 degrees. That's what he says. That means the one how we can have is qualification degrees we call. But for a pastor teacher, it is not what you do as a DD or literal DD or XYZ, though they are required for you to study more and more. So such kind of a syllabus are been outlined for you in order to orient your mind for proper preparation. And though you may graduate with 100% marks in them, without having the true bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, you cannot teach that. No doubt you may have all the knowledge under the sun and without this bona fide gift you cannot train them up. It is Lord's sovereign will on whom to bestow the spiritual gift. He uses the weakest thing, the foolish things to confound the strong and the wisest men on this earth. It is his sovereign will. And what a great joy it is for us to nourish and cherish in that sovereign will of the bona fide gifted pastor teacher to train you up. He can make a better speaker than with sticks or cigarette buds. Because today we find even in the congregation the pastors who are thinking they can go for a survival in their life and entering into the ministry before they could join the theological colleges, live off all their bad habits, having a crew cut and X, Y, Z, when they could smoke, they know what is a cigarette bird. Even out of that lot can make a perfect preacher more great than you, whom you think you have left all those things and entered into the, semi into the seminary to learn the word. It is truly his sovereign will. Our Lord made certainly to speak with an ass, through an ass, to an ass. The ass was donkey on Balaam. An ass was a Balaam who himself never understood the true glory of God wherewith he has designed this Israelites and warned him not to go, but he went. Then to what did it happen? Did he speak the truth? He wanted to curse in his mind, but what Lord made? He made them to bless. Certainly, dear brethren, today, where our Lord could sit upon us, we should be the ass of a cult where we can be certainly available for Lord's service. It is only to be as a mediator, to warn. And though the people are teaching, like Balaam, to go, to tell we are going to do X, Y, Z methods, at the judgment seat of Christ, you will find only the truth to be evaluated. The righteous teaching of those believers, believing pastors who were there as a male believers. Under the divine principle of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in training them up. So you may come with a great hope to the heaven to say, I have done this work, Lord. I have done that work, Lord. I have done miracles. I have done healings. But did you train the church? Did you teach the church the word of God if I have given you the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher? 
what Lord instigated in you, certainly it is Lord who is going to work and it is Lord who is going to make an accomplishment of achieving His work on this earth. As our Lord says in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 7 through 9, His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. As the water or the snow that comes to this land without wetting it, it doesn't go, so is the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher which our Lord gives to those male believers whose work is to certainly teach it doesn't go in any other manner only to teach 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 the things have been changed no revolution no prophecy all revolution all prophecy has been achieved through the completion of canon the permanency of the spiritual gifts after AD 96 being changed and certainly making everyone to become the bona fide gifted pastor teacher and not only that for certain few evangelical work and not only that for certain few certainly he makes to give the gift of helps administration and hospitality so that what they can find they can certainly find the church to be edified in the proper knowledge and every believer to be made perfect and complete and not in their own physical energy of their thoughts but purely in the divine energy of Lord God the Holy Spirit therefore we the believers of pastor teachers should know that our life is a divine center life our energy is a divine energy our health is a divine health because until and unless Lord's work has been accomplished we are immortal and what a great privilege it is for us to learn as per Philippians 1:25. Apostle Paul believed the servant of the Lord's life is immortal until his work has been done. Isn't it a great privilege for us? Why I'm giving you all these instructions in the first week of this new year 2017 so that you can have a circumcised year and apply to teach the word and you cannot teach the word until and as you have the bona fide gift and if you have the bona fide gift Lord certainly makes you to be trained up to study, to study, to study. Not at the cost of their spiritual life you are going to enjoy, dear brethren. You are here to serve them. You are here to train them up. If they have negative attitude, Lord looks into that matter. Because Lord will send you when you are prepared and when they are really desiring to send those shepherds who shall teach them with the proper knowledge of the word of the Lord, Lord will certainly send them when they desire, when the congregation desires. If the congregation doesn't desire, then at least you have one. Record and keep. That day's manna has been, spiritual manna has been given by God and certainly you have to go and take it out. You cannot throw it as useless and worthless because you don't have any hearers. And many people don't understand this simple knowledge in the word of the Lord which is so much essential for us to learn. In this idolatrous country where the people are having their own priests, I'm talking about India. For each and every respect of their idol, and I'm talking about the Hinduism, they are at least faithful in their work, though they do not know that their gods are no gods at all. They are faithful in their work in exercising so purely. But here it has been told for us, if a believer is not able to have that supremacy to show forth, then he is Chiron, more worse than an unbeliever, an unfidel. The salvation hope what a believer has, that man he doesn't even have, but then too he is performing his duties well. And in my state where I reside, which is great for Ajivikas, Certainly, they will know what it is to be so pure in moral attitudes. But what are they finding today? I'm talking about the believers. If a believer has been there and if he certainly uses his evil sense to certainly cheat and represent Christ Christmas as drinking and dancing, what do these unbelievers think? They think our God is far more superior because we don't even eat non-veg. <laughs> far less their God has allowed them to eat non-veg. They drink, they dance. And if there is any unbelieving priest, if he certainly has something in his mouth to chew like nuts, certainly they say he is not a priest for us. Far less they think their priest can have multiple wives, though they are. Because in every way you find the 
deceitful nature of heart to deceive the true and right paths. Deceiving their consciousness and keeping multiple affairs. Drinking, smoking, though they are like unbelievers, I am telling to you all. Much worse than them are our believers because they have at least not known the true love and the true source of eternal life in Christ and they are doing it. But we know the true love, we know the mind of Christ. Do we really know the mind of Christ to learn and to do what we ought to be in the sight of God? That's what the question should rise. Do we really know what is his mind? Have we really learned what is his thinking? Have you really been aware of the voice of the Spirit? And since you do not know, though there is a grace upon grace for us, and you don't use it, you don't think it, and you substitute for the learning of Bible doctrine with all of your cheapest illegal excuses and alibis, not to come and learn the Word, giving all your ignorance and arrogance attitudes, you will have a tough time at the judgment seat of Christ for ignoring these great high and holy privileges given for this believer. This great high and holy privilege is the mind of Christ, the completed canon, in order to know the basic doctrines which has to be the doctrine of dispensations and learn the truth. You will certainly have to pay at your cost. And at that time you will learn what you lost. But that thing what you have to do will not be done for you in the heaven. To be a witnesses for the Lord is in this devil's world. We are in the enemy's territory. To be a witnesses to glorify him to the maximum we are in this earth. After we depart, there is no way for you again to think you will come again back to witness for him. Every breath you take should be a witnesses for the truth on this earth. And if you go away without being a witness for this Lord and enjoying in eating and drinking and certainly failing to fall into the reality of sin unto death, what do you have to show forth at the judgment seat of Christ? Would be and stubble. You are given this great ability to have certainly to think infinite dollars of money for you to enjoy your life on this earth and infinite dollars of money in reality of spiritual terms spiritual blessings spiritual money and on this earth you are you need to spend only some one billion spiritual money that is much more luxurious for you to spend in a short span of time that is given for you when you are not able to meet and expend that one million spiritual money of term on this earth, then how you can explore the remaining infinite billions of spiritual money given for us. That is what dying sin unto death is all about. And that you have much variegated wisdom, the much knowledge of God, the much expensive of spiritual heavenly blessings for us. That is where, where the pastor teacher has to train you up. Your life has a meaning, your life has a purpose. In return, that pastor teacher, when he trains to the congregation, the congregation should go and teach to their wives. Their wives should implement those teachings to their children, children, children. But in today's Christendom, you will find only nominal Christians, weekly Christians, monthly Christians, yearly Christians. But you will not find day-to-day -day Christians. Because they don't love their life on this earth, to live a long life on this earth. They don't love to give a long witnesses of truth for great MGG on this earth. What do they like? What do they love? What do they think? Money, pleasure, success the material things of this earth power lust, approbation lust, sexual lust they love only to search in franticness of their happiness and they could be happy there by thinking if I have money everything is done if I am living this life I'm everything is done <laughs> but in the sight of God you are never considered dear brethren Lord wants first his spirituality. Therefore, when they could enter after the manna was being stopped into that land, the holiness of Jehovah, the first fruit, every male was being circumcised. Every male, every male. It has to be holiness unto Jehovah, that's it. The first fruits for Jehovah, that's it. 
Today in this church, every believer in the congregation has to circumcise, not with the physical realm, but the circumcision which our Lord makes to your heart through Christ our Lord, our Savior, so that now you could be totally separated, being baptized. In the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, at the moment of salvation, by faith alone in Christ alone, joined into the great royal family of God. And being buried with Christ, you wake up to die as a martyr unto Christ. What a great privilege it is for us to understand these things. And many people are living this earth without understanding these simple truths in Christ. This could be simple truths for you by your simple faith in the Lord to ask to send you pastors who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. That's why it's a simple truth. And if they are not able to teach you, if they are not able to train you up, then certainly you are not praying with an earnest desire to know this truth from the Lord. You are just there to go weekly ones, nominal Christians. Dear O doctor, so and so has told for you to counsel you, to marry you, to bury you, and you are happy there enjoying with him. But you have not known what is the right true duty of the pastor teacher, which is to feed you, to teach you, to train you up. That is what we have to learn. The right work of the pastors is to train you up. And if they are not training you up in the reality of the word, then certainly there is a great failure on this earth. The communicating vehicle which has to do its work, if it is not doing, then certainly many people are perishing. And why is it they are not able to communicate? Because they have not been properly trained. How they could be trained? By going to theological seminaries? No way. Theological seminars will give only the outlines. The training for him is to get down upon his knees and before our Lord to learn where flesh and blood cannot teach. That is the right training, neology rather than theology in Christ. Our Lord will train you and certainly he will send you after his own hearts who shall feed you up. Who have been earlier in the true bona fide gifted pastor teachers. Because spirit of Lord God Almighty is the same. The mental ministry of Lord God Almighty yesterday, today and tomorrow, forevermore it is the same. It cannot be changed. It cannot be altered. Therefore from the earlier bona fide gifted pastor teachers, our Lord trains up in the manner that he wants us to be in him, in Christ for his greater glory in Jehovah. And what does he do? He sends us, he directs us, them to us, irrespective of a geographical location. And what does you do? You have to think, Lord, please provide me to have a right into fellowship with thee. That's it. And Lord searches your hearts. He knows what are the even, even your evil imaginations inside your heart. If it is wrong, certainly Lord is going to block it out. If it is true and fair and right, because in eternity past, our Lord knows all these things. This I am telling to you all for your uh, explanation of the things, how the mechanics of anthropopathism or anthropomorphism could work. But the omniscient knowledge of God knows to whom to give in his sight this great bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to be a great privilege in the midst of this evil Christendom that is happening around. He knows it. And he gives that believer's life as a temporary sacrifice. And after he's been trained thoroughly to teach the word, his life is not of his own. He's spending at the cost of the curtailed sufferings of Christ on this earth. And he's going to be there available for Lord's work. Only for Lord's work. His life is not of his own. And certainly it is a great responsibility laid down upon our shoulders to think, to understand, to consider what certainly it could mean for us to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And many men can't understand what is our privilege in Christ. And many pastor teachers are not able to understand what is this great dispensation of unique church age spending their time in dancing, drinking, eating, rather than digging out to know what is this mystery doctrine, what is this mind of Christ, what it is to be fearful unto the Lord and to learn His ways, what it is to be a thiso beyond in the sight of God. Cornelius stated in Acts 10.34, 
The blind man stated in 931 of John, anyone who fears God and does his will, certainly Lord is going to hear them. Are we really doing Lord's work? Are we really waiting to hear certainly the teachings of the word of the Lord? Or are we just coming weekly once to the church to show forth that you are also given an attendance to the local assembly? And the word which has been taught for us in 1 Timothy 4, giving attendance to the local assembly doesn't mean that you go and attend the church. But in your thought, in your mind, you have to be available to teach what you have to teach to them. That's what instruction was been given to Timothy. Attend to your mind, which Lord God, the Holy Spirit, gives you the thought to teach them. And not just making legalistic activities to sell or to tell weekly ones, I will attend the church because I have to give attendance to the church. No. Every day is the design of Lord God Almighty. And now the days being more evil, it has to be every hour if you can ask. But since we know you have your works, you cannot stand there for a long time. As Apostle Paul thought for three and a half years in Ephesus, he tells, While they were working in the daytime, I used to teach them in the night. While they were available in the night time, they used to go for daytime. While they were available for the daytime, the night time they used to work, then daytime I used to teach. How blessed are those people whose names have been written in the Bible, whose examples have been told for us, and millions and trillions and galatians of people have read those examples. The Ephesians crowds giving their time for doctrine. Rather than Rome, it should have been the first primary place of Ephesus. The word of the Lord where it has been taught. First by Paul, then by Timothy, then by Apostle John. Isn't it a great privilege where Lord has given for us three generational ministers for them to teach? How blessed they would be. Do you know how? Because they were loving to give their time. Not just one hour, two hours as we do. More than five to eight hours per day. Eight to five hours or five to eight hours per day. Where do we find today so much of patience in the pulpit? Then how much of doctrinal information which Apostle Paul was having in his mind to communicate for them than just think? How the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit when it has the same power of Lord God the Holy Spirit working in him today after the completion of canon through the true bona fide gifted pastor teacher will train them up to teach more and more. Do you think as a pastor teacher we get sleep? No, you will not. Because much is given for us, much is expected from us. And much when it is given for us, we need to study, we need to learn, we need to be prepared, we need to be there available for His work on this earth. Every day is accountable, every breath is accountable, every second is accountable. At one end, whether you're in the fellowship or not, you are fighting still. But at the other end, every second when you are being in the redeemed time of the Lord to purchase his MGG are we using those words which are worthy for his glorification that will be a great pain in the heart of the pastor teacher today it is gone it is gone it will never come back again 2016 is a history now 2018 is a future now the present is 2017 and that day today Jan 8th and the first, second Sunday of this earth. And if Lord is still delaying the rapture, it certainly gives a clear indication for us to know that you have to grab 1 Timothy 2.4 to see, to work your ministry of reconciliation in heavenly aristocratship, to see, to learn and to make, to come to the full knowledge of Christ on this earth. When Lord has given us such kind of a great responsibility upon our shoulders, then why do we still ignore the doctrine of dispensations to learn the growth? So that as a believer, when you train, the, as a pastor teacher, when you train your believers, your believers in return, certainly they go and train their children, and their children should be certainly disciplined and admonished through the proper nurturing and caring of the word of the law. And when they fail, the total mechanism for the next generation will be spoiled. 
Therefore the youth, our Lord says through John, in first John chapter 2, you are strong because you have overcome the wicked one. By the age of 25 we need to overcome this wicked one. How? By getting thoroughly acquainted, pursued with the word of the Lord. And why we demand you to write in the kingship? The first order is from Bible, biblical mandate as told in Deuteronomy 17, 18 to write. And the second order is so that when these ministers are not teaching to you the truth, at least you can understand there is something there in the Bible when you are writing it to look and to consider, to think that these things are not being taught by the minister, then how much more you are losing and how much more you are not able to have your real viewpoint of life in the sight of God to execute this protocol plan and make your life for a meaningful and eternal service wherewith the impact of life not only on this time even in eternity reflects. That's the reason we ask you to write because you may not find faithful, bona fide, gifted pastor teachers in each and every corner of the pulpit. The first grace for salvation, how much important it is to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be saved much more than it has been required for us after salvation to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, to be really executing for our salvation process, for the end product of the results of our salvation, which have been saved. And if you have been deprived of the word of the Lord with their commentary, with their viewpoints, with their thinking, with their explanations, which is not according to the mind of Christ, then you think how many weeks you are going to survive on this earth. You think how many years you are going to survive on this earth. Then just calculate how much of data you are, communicate, you, are, you are having in your mind to certainly truly live a divine viewpoint of natured life. You may think you are living a pious life, but pious life is not. Thesobian life is not for the church age. For the church age, the life is usobian. And you have to know what is usobian. This usobian principal life, which we shall cover tomorrow, the Claptes, Lestes and Misthotes crowd will never come even to look what is this use of beyond life as told in 1 Timothy 6.4 and those who do not teach that use of beyond life you have to depart from them. This use of beyond life as we have been telling for you several times the spiritual self-esteem the first stage of the adult spiritual life followed by spiritual autonomy and then getting back into spiritual maturity. When you pass down in these three stages certainly you will be reaching for MGG maximum glorification of Christ and when you are going through that Lord certainly provides you breaks. How we are going to provide you breaks is going to make you to test what doctrine you have learnt. Are you really applying it or not? The first stage it is cognitive self-confidence of doctrine then for that doctrine the testing is problem solving devices which has been given for you to be occupied there and certainly the examinations will be the number one providential preventive suffering and for the second stage of spiritual autonomy cognitive independence that is what you require only the word not the counsel or the experience or the rationalisms or the empiricism of the viewpoint of this world of this cosmos diabolicus and there you are having problem solving device number nine which is which is sharing the happiness of god and there you have the testing coming to you momentum testing under four categories people testing thought testing system testing and disaster testing and when you pass on that test you are entering into the third and final stage spiritual maturity and here you have what cognitive Native invincibility. There is nothing more than the word of the Lord. And then what you do? You go for problem solving device number 10 because you have been occupied with Christ. That is the highest virtue. So that when you have been occupied with Christ, then your faith can work the good works which have been designed for you before the foundation of the world to walk in them, to do them. And that includes every word that you speak, every breath you take in the MGG glorification of God to maximum glorification of Lord. Isn't it strange? To enjoy certain things, you need to be first have capacity. Without capacity, you cannot enjoy. So, in order to do the good deeds which Lord designs through you, you need to have what? Capacity. That capacity doesn't come by your emotion, which is be just like gas, puffed off, loosed, when it has been ended up. But this work of Lord God the Holy Spirit calls for us to think and to understand whether you believe it or not in the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit it take, it gives us the things pertaining not to bulomai or tello it gives for us to understand with the mind with the mind with the mind thinking 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 not with emotion 
And then cognitive indian ability followed by occupation with christ you are entering into the life's last examination for you on this earth evidence testing this evidence testing other of the two categories which you get one towards the plan of life one towards the plan of god the plan of life like job which you have studied the plan of god like our lord and savior jesus christ though he was being tempted to certainly tell make these stones to eat to to make bread and eat our lord though he was being in the wilderness not being given the spiritual manna day by day then to our lord says he was obedient and he did not make that stone to be manna to eat though the israelites on the other part they were been given every day manna they lost it but because our lord was feeding upon the spiritual manna he knew how to answer back satan through the word and he said man does not live by bread alone but by every word which comes from the mouth of lord god almighty the same principle should be to the right true bona fide gifted pastor teacher we will survive upon the word not upon the illegal righteous methods to raise money by standing in the pulpits though we don't have the bona fide gift to stand being obedient to the lord and to his word in the midst of such kind of a evil attitudes where the people have not known the truth where the people have not understood the truth where the people are not executing the true life of christ where they could be easily deceived and cheated because now they are ignorant as we have noted in one of the tapes pertaining to the martin luther reformation movement they have signed back to the roman catholicism that they will be once again catholics why the catholics don't open the bible neither they know that there are true testaments in the bible the martin luther reformation is what they bought they bought bible into our hands but now the believing protestant one as not opening the bible certainly what they are doing there is no difference between the both and where they are ending up they are certainly ending up not to know the truth and they really sign back because they have not known to give importance for doctrine and since many believers do not know what is there in the word of the lord certainly the congregation will be certainly leaded by the blind one who do not know what is the will of god who do not know what is the mental ministry of lord god the holy spirit through the right and proper bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to a male believer and who do not know what are the high and the holy privileges he comes and stands for you in the pulpits and you certainly follow that blind man because you are blind because you are not opening the bible that's it until as you open the bible and see what the bible teaches to you you can never really discern whether is a true pastor or a false pastor for you and until and until you are there in the influence of that false pastors you certainly make think legalism will be the result or piety will be the result but never the true spirituality in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit by using rebound never and until and as you get back into the true spiritual fellowship of lord god the holy spirit by using rebound till then you will never know what is the mind of christ because the word of the lord says until and as you are been controlled of lord god the holy spirit you are never driven to open the bible the true fellowship of lord god the holy spirit is to drive you to open the bible to provide a burning desire in your heart and that burning desire in your heart with persistence and from asking the lord to provide you right and faithful pastor teachers and then moving upon to learn and to know your life is the true principle of the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit that burning desire followed by perseverance is the main purpose where with you and i have been given this great value in christ does it look strange it is a fact John 16:23 quotes for us when Lord God the Holy Spirit comes he shall guide you into all truth where do you find the truth in emotion in ecstatic tongues or gibberishly jumping around thinking that the miracles or healings even unbelievers do miracles and healings even un- unbelievers go to the place where Thomas came for the first time in Kerala in my India thinking that they have their gods there and they go by fasting 21 days or 40 days they call it as by wearing malas some sort of black robes and they have their wear and they have their methods of performing their vows and rituals and they go and they say we are also going for kerala to go to that god they are also living legally in in their standards of thinking certainly the pastor teacher is also living in their standards of thinking telling that we shall raise them to be in that manner of legalism <laughs> 
then where do they end up they end up not learning the word of the lord what difference does it make if you follow rituals moral standards without thinking in your mind the thinking has to be renovated renovation of thinking is all about romans 12 123 and that is the true spiritual life for a believer on this earth a renovation of thinking in christ renovation 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 and that renovation doesn't occur for you upon yesterday's experience or last month's doctrine day by day day by day day by day is your spiritual growth and apostle paul tells in second corinthians 4:16 though your outward man perishes inward man has to be renewed day by day renewed renovated it is not week by week today the second week is gone we will be hardly left out with 50 weeks and with 50 weeks you just count one hour of data to be communicated for you in the spiritual mind of in the true fellowship of lord god the holy spirit then it counts for you to be the days two days and six hours that is two quarter of a day for one whole year which lord blesses you to be in his great privilege in the first fruit of holiness to enjoy by your heart circumcised in the word of the lord and have a circumcised ear e a r not rather than having y e a r new ear and give no more priority for its word and stand behind to the truth and understand the word does it look strange for you you are not knowing your divine privileges for you in this high holy calling in christ you are not knowing your equal privilege and equal opportunity in executing this protocol plan of god you are being made not known to learn the word so this blind pastor what does he do he ignores this mystery doctrine and teaches you like those people who are practicing in hinduism to go to their gods in kerala by teaching for you all to tell certainly follow the ritual modes certainly follow the legalistic activities and where do they end up blind leading the blind both they end up in ditch and when you wake up in the heaven you will say i have really believed that pastor so much <laughs> no excuses no alibis no pleading ignorance at his presence you had your own evolution you have been given after that great protestant movement falling killing down that holy roman empire and given the bible in your hands you have ignored it you have not opened it you have not studied it you have not known the true power of the word of the lord and you have certainly enjoyed in your emotions there is no pleading of ignorance for you because you never really desired to know with a true burning desire what is the work of lord god almighty you have never really understood the power of the word neither the desire of your evolution to be looking upon the second grace when did you give the time weekly once just imagine you are surviving after salvation at the age of 20 till to the age of 70 50 years and in those 50 years regularly you attend the church every week week every week one hour on a base then after your salvation it counts from age 20 till to the age of 70 or i wish you could live till to the age of 120 so that 100 years could be brought into account and in for one year if you are having 52 weeks and if you are getting it to make as a point of two quarter of a day then for 100 years how many days are giving back 200 days or we can calculate in the real of 200 days or 210 days and in this 100 years of time which lord has bestowed for you if you can calculate the time that are giving back it equivalent only for 7 months if it is 210 days in christ only for 7 months and the greater jehovah of life which has been given for you you give back only 7 months of time and now you calculate the percentage how much you are giving back enoch did not do that enoch walked with the lord and his percentage was nearly calculated on 86 or 86 point change so many days he really walked with the lord 
But a believer has been called to walk 100% with the Lord. In the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and not to waste his time. Therefore, in order to make sure, you need to understand that doctrine should be taught in the pulpits rather than guarding them to become involving in emotionalism, personality cults, church programs, social work or political activisms. Trends today in, Christian, in Protestant Christianity show signs of an imbalance which emphasizes the visible at the expense of invisible the material at the expense of the spiritual, the believer's overt image at the expense of the inner dynamics of Bible doctrine in the soul. Where does the problem rise? This problem takes roots in the ignorance of dispensational doctrines. The overwhelming majority of Christians do not know what God has provided for them or why he has given them so much. After salvation, what? What does God desire the Christians to do? If believers do not realize that they belong to this great royal family of God, how can they fulfill their destinies? How can they execute the the protocol plan of God for the church age. If they do not know such a plan really exists, ignorance undercuts every good intention. No matter how a Christian desires to make his life count for God, if he is ignorant of God's plan, he fails to glorify God. At best, the impact of his life is fleeting, no sooner achieved than dissipated. At worst, his impact is for evil, as he inadvertently struggles in Satan's cause to improve the devil's world. Dear brethren, you need to know every day how much important it is because the church age believer has been given a mandate to be under the same divine dinosphere and to put on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Romans 13 14 to have Christ our Lord formed in us Galatians 4 19 to have Christ at home in our hearts Ephesians 3 16 through 17 to exalt Christ in our bodies that is what Philippians 1, 20 through 21. So, by keeping this astounding facts in the face wherewith you are being united forever, we ask with a profound question after salvation, what? Simplified answer is to learn Bible doctrine. Church age doctrine sets forth the protocol of Christ's royal family. In mystery doctrine alone, we learn of the portfolio God established personally for each of us in eternity past. The portfolio contains outright gifts from God, which define the scope of our freedom and responsibility. We are the heavenly aristocrats residing on this earth. We are royal priests so that we could become royal kings and show forth our royal ambassadorship work. We have an unprecedented opportunity to utilize divine power, and God stands ready to enlarge our already vast resources. And if we learn and understand our apply his word he will stimulate our own desire to know him lead us into eternally meaningful service and lift us above all our sufferings he will create an impact with our lives that will resound throughout time and eternity our royal destiny is to become invisible heroes in this most intense and challenging dispensation of human history so dear brethren by learning these things and training up your children and training them in a manner that should be pleasable to the lord is your goal on this earth so which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow for our regular believers. But for weekly believers who come to the weekly ones to the church, it shall be next week. So which way you want to go, you decide. Meditate upon these things. We shall continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life, inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest merit is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest merit is to carry so thon lagan, herald the word in season out of season because of the great diameter of my witnesses where you have been called. Number one diameter my witnesses in building trinity followed by bible in our hands number two are hearers if there are no hearers do the brethren not worry besides nature the entire angelic course will be our witnesses but what is our work our work is to rightly divide the word of truth when we are prepared in season or out of season to answer the truth when the people can come and dig in us what is the salvation that we are hoped for what is the salvation you are called to enjoy for and what is the peace that we really love in christ so which way you go you decide we shall come tomorrow
Father, we are grateful for this great privilege, O Lord. Thou art holy, and we are also ought to be holy. Help us to do the work faithfully, at the same time to be a true witnesses for you on this earth, training us in the manner wherewith you have chosen us to be trained. Because we have been bought with a price, and we need to glorify you, and we can never be the slaves of men, because we are to answer you, and we are not answerable to anyone on this earth. Help us to do thy work faithfully as an unprofitable slaves, which is our work to be done. For we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord, and may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten and challenge us through this message so that the people can truly understand thy true calling in Christ. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.